What's up, people? Figured that I should do a video. Um, I'm having a really hard time right now. I'm actually in the process of kicking heroin. Or, you know, I say heroin, but most of the heroin nowadays, it, it's it's fentanyl. And it, the it, it, it's way harder kicking fentanyl than it is kicking heroin. I, I've kicked heroin multiple times. It's the worst shit ever. It's the worst shit ever, but this is worse. The only thing, it, the worst thing that I've ever kicked is, is Suboxone. 100%. So, you might see me start sweating in this video. Um, you know, my, my head is kind of clouded, so this might not be the best video, but I feel like I should put something out just because I'm fucking going crazy here. You know, I'm still kind of quarantined, you know, because of my my breathing issues, my lung issues. Um, I can't get this fucking virus, man. Anyways, here, cheers. Hold up. <sighs> fucking A, man. So, yeah, I'm taking Suboxone. I'm eating Kratom. If you're not familiar with Suboxone, Suboxone is a semi-synthetic opioid. Or I think it's a fully synthetic opioid. And it, um, in jail, we would sell these for a hundred bucks a piece. You'd be able to break them up into 32 pieces. And if you didn't have a um, opiate tolerance, you could take a 30 second, you know, a, a, a one out of 32 pieces of these and get fucking jammed. You'd be wrecked, you'd be feeling great, you'd be out playing cards, you'd be talking with your friends and you'd just be in a great fucking mood, you'd be feeling amazing, you'd have shitload of energy, you'd be cleaning the cell. And uh, it, it was great. <laughs> and I've actually, um, when I was on probation, I would when I would go in to take my drug test, if I thought I might get locked up that day, I would have the drugs in my butthole. Not even gonna sugarcoat it. Like when you're on probation in this jail, it, this this jail that I was going to was a very, very serious, violent jail, especially if you're a white guy. Cause the white, the white guys would prey on each other which is usually a no-no and it's just fucked up in uh, a lot of other jails a lot, of, a lot of places don't do that shit usually people stick together but this place it was very serious i saw a lot of fights i saw i was in uh i, got, I was in a fight I, I ended up doing time in solitary confinement uh the dude that i fought i'm actually really good friends with to this day <coughs> But um, I saw people get airlifted out of there on helicopters. I uh, I was at a pre-release. There's a fight downstairs. I go to the bathroom. There's fucking blood everywhere. Uh, one day I was sitting on, sitting, you know, next to this dude in his bunk. And this dude just comes up to him. and just starts beating the fuck out of him right next to me. And I just got up, backed off, and just, <laughs> you don't get... <coughs> You don't get involved in that shit. You know, you don't want that beef. It was part of a gang, um, a gang initiation. Um, and the gang that they were, the whole gang thing was so whack at this place. This gang was so whack, but they were, they were really violent. And they've actually since taken over the prison system, um, in my area and taken over a lot of the county jails just because of how violent and ruthless they are. And, uh, uh, I'm friends with some of the people that are in this gang, uh, but I also have beef with some of the people that are in this gang, just because I don't like the way that they do things. I don't think that they, you should be extorting people. Um, I don't think that you should be fucking with people. If, if someone isn't a sex offender, if they're not a rat, just, just let them do their time, man. You know, don't bother them. Unless there's a reason to, unless they do something. Uh, if they fucking smell like shit all the time, write a shower warrant, drop it on their bed, uh, 
or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, just, there's dumb little shit that people do, but, uh, there's no reason to start, start this insane amount of violence and extortion and all this crazy shit that was going on in this jail. And I'm really lucky that I was able to bring drugs into this block and start selling them to these people because it, it'd get away with it and be able to do it because other people would come in with drugs they would find out that they had drugs if they would this they would actually hold people down in the bathroom put on a glove and put their hands in the fucking person's asshole which is rape to me if you do that you're a sex offender to me you're a piece of shit you can go fuck yourself check into pc i don't want you on the fucking block you know what I mean? Fuck that shit. But they would go, put on a glove, and they would take the Suboxone out of these, it, whatever drugs they had out of the people's ass. And I was just, like, imagine having that happen to you. Be fucking terrible. And this shit was going down while I was there. So it was, it was a very tense experience. And, um, it was, it was not fun. Also, there was no air conditioning in this jail. I was going through severe withdrawal, a lot worse than I am right now, and um, I ain't sleep for, for weeks. Um, and, and sometime I'll go into my first um, experience being incarcerated, because like I said, if you watch this channel, you know, I, I, I give tips. You know, my most popular video by far is about shoplifting and about some of the ways you could do it and get away with it. And how I look at it as a, a political act. It an act of rebellion and an act of defiance. Rather than just a petty crime. Which it also is. Uh, but anyways. Fucking. Yeah man. It's, I'm sorry. I, I'm fucking out of it right now. I feel like straight shit. I'm getting hot and cold. Hot and cold. I'm sweating like crazy. But uh I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to finish this fucking video and put it out after I take a sip of this fucking beer. Okay, anyways, let me, I'm gonna tell a story about my first time getting arrested. Stupid as fuck. <laughs> this is a, a fucking straight up retarded story. Um, so me and my friends, we used to make, we used to blow shit up. Um, and we would make, uh, we would go on the Anarchist Cookbook. We would go on the internet and learn how to make things that we could blow shit up with uh so one of the things that we used to do just uh at a boredom we would take rubbing alcohol and chlorine tablets put it in a water bottle you just take a little piece of one you break it up put it in a fig with uh <clears throat> rubbing alcohol there's other ingredients that you could do it with you shake it you throw it and it blows the fuck up so anyways i was when this kid was making this device, I was fucking around and I was smoking weed. <laughs> I was packing the bowl, breaking the weed up, smoking it, and uh, he gave it to me to set off. And I was like, all right, yeah. Like, we, we would do this all the time, multiple times a day. So this was like nothing to me. So instead of using half of a tablet, I, I, this video is going to get taken off the internet. Instead of making it the way that he was supposed to, he put four times the fucking ingredients in this thing. And so I went, I shook it, I went to throw it, and it just, boom! And I just, right away, I look at my hand, because it felt like, you know, I'm a skateboarder. If you've ever had the feeling when you fall, you smack your hand on the ground really hard and your hand goes numb. That's what it felt like. It felt like I had slapped my hand against the ground or against the wall or hard object as hard as I could, and it fucking hurt. And so when I looked at my hand, I could see this was split open through 
my thumb, between my thumb and my index finger, and I could see about a, a few inches down in there. And I could tell you that there is, there's some meat here, there's some meat here, but this spot that you feel right here, there's nothing there. So if you cut your, if you take a razor and you cut between your thumb, you could see a good two inches down in between all the meat and shit. And I saw it, I looked down, I see all the tendons, I see all the meat, it was white, it hadn't started bleeding yet. And the dude is freaking out and he's like, yo, what happened, what happened? Yeah, I'm not saying anything. What I did is I went, I took my weed in my pipe, I hit it and I started walking down the street, this was before cell phones, and I'm just like, fuck, fuck, I'm freaking out, you know. I'm just like swearing, I'm like just looking at my hand, I'm bleeding profusely. I go knock on my neighbor's door and uh, I, I tell him to give me a phone. So when I'm on the phone, this is how dumb I am. Uh, I get on the phone with 911 and I say, hey, I need an ambulance, I fell off my bike. They're, they're like, I'm sorry, what happened? And I'm like, a bomb blew up in my hand. And once you say the B word, this was right after 9-11. Too. <laughs> so fucking they came and um the bomb squad <laughs> had to come and uh they ended up they ended up arresting me they it, you know they got all like the fucking suit and everything they're looking for the device because i called it a fucking bomb like a fucking idiot yeah you know i'm, I'm saying this could probably get taken off youtube i'm not saying i'm saying b-a-l-m like bomb so uh yeah, just so this shit doesn't get taken down. But, uh, I ended up going, I ended up getting, they had to stitch up the inside of the wound, and then they had to stitch up the outside of the wound. And I remember this is the first time that they gave me Demerol at the hospital, and I had an awesome reaction to this shit, where I actually started, like, tripping. Like, the shit on the walls, like, they had all these vines on the walls of the hospital, and the vines started moving around and shit, which is not normal for opiates. But it was something, something in the concoction that just made the shit on the walls, like, the, the vines started moving. It was awesome. That was probably the point that I became an opiate addict. Um, especially because it was IV Demerol. Yeah, it, it, it was great. Uh, but then I got out. And they charged me with um, detonating an explosive device. And what ended up happening was, this is my first time getting in trouble. My first of, of many times with the police. And I ended up pleading out to just a year of probation. Um, but I'm definitely on a fucking watch list. You know, like I make these videos... Um, the shit going on on my Facebook account, I know that there's someone watching my shit. I know it sounds paranoid, but if you're into the type of movements that I'm into and you've been involved with the type of shit that I'm involved with, you kind of, <coughs> we're all being monitored by the NSA. Uh, Edward Snowden made that very clear, and we all knew it before. But, um, yeah, like, my, my shit is definitely being monitored because once you have been arrested for this type of crime you're you're definitely on some type of watch list <laughs> you're definitely on a watch list if you've been charged with you know setting off a fucking bomb which it's it's a stretch to call this a bomb you know like we we made a lot of other shit that definitely could be considered much more <laughs> you know like we we made a lot more heavy duty shit than this and we would blow shit up with it um, all the time. And we would, we you know, as a pyro, we would light tons of shit on fire. And that was what we would do. We would blow shit up. We would light shit on fire. And just destroy shit. Just for the fuck of it. You know, when you're a kid, we would do that. And then uh, another thing that we would do is we would sneak out of each other's house at night. And go in people's backyards. This was in Florida, and these people would have, but well, we would we would break into cars, uh, which I ended up getting, I, I ended up catching a case for that later. 
um, a, a big case, a bunch of charges of, of breaking and entering, burglary, um, forgery, um, and theft-related charges that I ended up doing time in South Florida for. Uh, I'll tell that story sometime, um, especially my first 30 days getting locked up in that jail was was very, very fucking hard, especially because I got put on suicide watch, and when you're in suicide watch in jail, some places have this thing called a turtle suit, which is like a big ass bulletproof vest, but this place just had a paper Johnny, which is just like some shit's made of paper or plastic, they put it over you, and they just throw you in a freezing cold cell, ass naked, with nothing, no mat, no, nothing to sit on, just the toilet and the freezing cold floor. I was dope sick as fuck going through it, and I, I was like, I, I gotta drown myself in the toilet. I gotta fucking kill myself somehow. This is too unbearable. It's just, it was torture. I was freezing. It, it, I was dope sick. It was, it was just, it was the worst thing ever. You know, and I'll go into that story another time. I want to uh, make a video about what to do if you get arrested and what to expect if you go to jail and what to, how to carry yourself, how to interact with people and really just, just how to survive in general that situation because jails of the United States this may be a first world country but it, they're they're serious you know there's a lot of serious shit going down um a lot of stabbings a lot of fights a lot of times in county jails you don't see stabbings but at the place that I was at it it was it would some of the places that I've been are extremely violent and uh it's, it's a scary place to be for anyone Never mind if you, if you look very young, and if you're you're a smaller dude like me. You know, thankfully I had my my sense of humor, my personality to get me through. Um, otherwise, it would have been really hard to survive. And I and I do have PTSD from that, and I get a lot of reoccurring nightmares about being stuck in jail with enemies, uh, with people that you don't want to be around and just in a really fucked situation. I definitely have PTSD from that, from seeing a lot of the, the really bloody fights, the dudes getting airlifted out of the jail. And, you know, like I said, going into the bathroom and just seeing blood everywhere. Never mind seeing fights happen right next to me out of nowhere, completely unprovoked. Just all of a sudden, someone goes and gets attacked. And like I said, I was I was involved in uh, fights myself. But luckily, the dude that I fought, I, I was I was friends with him. Um, I ended up going to the hole for that, and uh, I actually ended up smoking shit called K2, which was synthetic marijuana in the hole. My uh, celly, he had like a, a a notebook with him. And he had a piece of K2 paper in there, which is paper that they would spray with a synthetic weed shit. And you would break up, you could either eat it, or you could break up the pieces of paper into little bits, kind of roll them up, you know, into little balls that roll joints with them. What we would do was pop the socket. And what we, how we would do that was, I, uh, I found you want a piece of pencil lead or a piece of metal. And we got a, pe uh, a piece of a, pe a pencil. We um, you put it in water, so the 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 um, the the shit gets soft. And then you could actually take the lead out of the pencil, break it into pieces, and you take two pieces, put it in a socket, which is fucking scary. Uh, you definitely don't want to touch your both your fingers together while you're putting it in. You want to make sure that you're putting it one at a time. You can take another piece of lead, you wrap toilet paper around it, so it creates something that you could drop, and you could put both ends of the lead onto the other two pieces of the the other two pieces of the lead, and you take a piece of toilet paper and you put it and you tap it and it sparks. And when it sparks, you catch the piece of toilet paper on fire, and you use that to to light the joint. 
So we were smoking every day, and every day I knew that we were going to smoke because this dude, uh, my celly in the hole, he would get up, he would start pacing around. You just got to be like, fuck. Start talking to himself, start mumbling to himself, and then he'd just be like, you know what, fuck it, light up. Fuck it, light up, man. It, it, you know, he'd always be like, I'm not going to smoke today. We're not smoking today. And every day, like clockwork, he'd get up, when he'd start pacing, we'd start talking to himself, I'd just be like, nice, dude, we're about to smoke. And it's not even a fun experience smoking this shit, because it gets you so fucking paranoid and delusional. It's like weed mixed with crack, but if you've been on a crack binge for weeks, because it makes you extremely paranoid, it makes you start thinking that you're acting weird, and a lot of times people would just go and we would just get in our bunks and just like pretend to be asleep. It'd start like wigging out. But it was just a way of getting out of ourselves. So, um, yeah. And uh, one of my friends, actually, uh, a couple of my friends actually ended up having seizures from the shit and uh, ended up getting shipped out to the hospital while I was uh, incarcerated in. One of the jails that I was at, very serious jail, very violent, crazy jail. And he, they actually had seizures from it. They came back from the hospital. We were all still smoking it. We weren't even phased by it. But uh, yeah, for a while, K2 was very big because you could get it in. What they would do is they would take the K2 and they would spray it onto a letter. And then we would take the letter and we would rip up the pieces of paper and then smoke the paper. And so eventually they caught on to that. And uh, they started photocopying the mail. So they wouldn't give you the actual paper that it was on. But for a while, a lot of people were making a lot of money with this. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely on a watch list. <laughs> That's a fucking fact. I know, you know, not just from going to protests, being involved in, in a lot of the social movements that I've been involved in. If you get arrested for detonating explosive device, you're on a fucking watch list for life. That's a fucking fact. So sometimes I, I tell my psychiatrist and my therapist, you know, like, I get paranoid, like, that the fucking government is watching me or some shit, and they're like, this kid is out of his fucking mind. And, yeah, you know, I kind of am. But, um, also, there's, I definitely gave these people a lot of reason to want to watch me and to and you know i'm not that important you know i know that but we're all under surveillance um social media is you know a huge surveillance operation it's no secret it's been exposed over 10 years ago and um it, it's fucked up and you know like i you know i cover my face in this video under no illusions that the government, you know, knows who I am or anything like that. I just don't want to bring too much heat on myself. But, uh, anyways, just wanted to tell a little bit of a story about that. A little bit of a story about my first arrest for crazy charges like that. Luckily, I was only 14 at the time, so I didn't end up getting in too much trouble for it. But still... That is definitely something that follows you around for the rest of your life. Uh, Jesus Christ, dude. I'm sweating like crazy. I'm going through it. I'm really trying to, you know, I'm trying to quit heroin. I don't want to be addicted to heroin anymore. I can't do it. I've been going through this for too long. And it's just time to stop. And I actually have someone that owes me right now. And I, I haven't collected on it because I need to get through this withdrawal. I need to kick. I need to be done with this so I can go back to normal, so I can sleep again. So I can stop sweating profusely, so I can stop being hot and cold, so I can stop fucking shitting myself, so I can stop having goosebumps, so I can just feel like I'm crawling out of my skin. It's just, it's the worst feeling ever. It's the worst fucking feeling ever. But uh, I'm trying to get through it. You know, I'm drinking a little bit. Uh, taking a little bit of Kratom. Taking my Suboxone, which has no effect on me whatsoever. But um, I I'm really trying to get past this part of my life. Actually, I think yesterday or today is National Overdose Awareness Day. And um, 
I made a post on social media just talking about all the friends that I've lost, a lot of the people that I've seen, you know, die right in front of me, and a lot of the fucked up experiences I have with overdoses, a lot of the, you know, with the overdose that I had that left me severely mentally fucked up. You know, I've never been the same since that overdose. Um, I aspirated my vomit. You know, I, I had no oxygen to my brain for a prolonged period of time. I was in the ICU, breathing tubes, all that shit on Christmas. And luckily I made it to my parents' room and because I knew I was overdosing. And I literally, the bathroom was right across from my parents' room, got in my parents' room, fell down on my back, threw up, and it went into my lungs. I was in the ICU for a week, coughing up vomit. And it was, it was just a horrible experience. But anyways, I'm fucking sweating like crazy. I gotta take a shower. I gotta fucking like chug this fucking, some beer, and just try to fucking make myself feel a little bit better. But wanted to put out a video. I know that this isn't going to be helpful for anyone, for anything. If anything, it's going to be detrimental to you. So, uh, yeah, just forget that you ever fucking saw this video. And uh, go out. Uh, be gay. Do crime. And uh, have a good night.